Hello wonderful people, it is Genevieve and in this video we're going to draw a watercolor Christmas tree in Procreate. So open up the app, create a new canvas and let's start drawing. So as usual we are going to start by creating a new layer. And this layer we're going to rename to trunk or anything that you remember but basically we're going to draw the trunk on it so I highly recommend you name it trunk. And we're going to pick the color that you want your trunk to be. So somewhere between brown and gray. And I will be using the watercolor brushes from my ultimate watercolor brush set, which will be linked in the description below, but you can always use different brushes and just play with the opacity slider on the left um, and get some sort of a watercolor effect that's not going to have the texture, but it's still better than nothing. That being said, you're gonna start by drawing one vertical line in the center and you want it to be a bit wobbly, so not, not perfect. And over it, you're gonna draw even more lines and since we have watercolor brushes or brushes with a lower opacity um, the colors are going to stack together and that's going to help with giving the effect of like um like the texture of the trunk the trunk basically and once you have that go ahead and draw some some of the branches so you don't want to draw a lot just kind of a few pairs of branches or maybe a few groups of branches here and there uh, making them shorter at the top and then getting longer and longer the closer to get to the bottom and you'll, you'll leave a little bit of space towards the bottom as well. And to get rid of that digital looking feel a little bit, we'll smooth out some of the dark edges in the overlaps. So either with the smudge tool that comes with Procreate or with the water blender, you're just going to gently go over some of these dark overlaps. Um, not all of them, you do want to keep some of the texture, but just a little bit of them and as you can see it instantly make the piece look just more like traditional watercolor instead of like digital art strokes. So once you have this kind of tree skeleton <laughs> on your, your canvas, go ahead and create a new layer that you're going to rename to branches. And on this layer we're going to draw some of the branches, so we're going to have three branches layer um, and I'm going to tell you about that later, but basically start with a color that you want to be kind of the middle color. So not too light, not too dark, just just the middle color. And we're going to use the Dark Edges watercolor, or again, the brush that you've been using before with a lowered opacity. And you're going to kind of draw clusters around the branches that you have on your uh, tree skeleton. <laughs> and when I say clusters, it's kind of like you are drawing clouds um, so don't really think too much about needles or like very thin um, well they're not leaves but yeah don't don't think about needles just think about clusters that are like wobbly not super defined but that kind of stretch out outwards so not really high fairly long um, little wobbly shapes um, just around your branches for now. And you can add a few extra clusters just to help balance everything out, especially at the bottom of your tree when you, you left a gap without any branches. You can add some cluster there for sure and maybe at the top as well. So at this point you should have a tree that looks quite sad <laughs> to be honest, but that is totally normal because we're going to create one new layer that we're going to put below the branches and actually below the trunk. I'll do that later, but I forgot now um, and you're going to rename it to back branches and on this layer you're going to draw it with a lighter version of your first color and maybe also a bit more of a blue version of that green and you're going to just draw more of these like thin wobbly clusters focusing mainly on filling in kind of the the gaps of your tree so that tree that is really looking sad right now we're gonna fill it in a little bit so it's not as desperate looking not that you know not that like all trees are perfect in their own way but we're just gonna fill this one in a little bit more so once you have your back branches completed go ahead and play with the opacity I like to have it just a little bit lower um, I just like the, the feel of it and then like I said as well I forgot to put it below the trunk so make sure to do that and once that is done you're going to create a new layer and this one is going to be for the front branches so like I mentioned early in the video we have three layers for the branches so that's going to be the last one 
And this one we're gonna have branches that are quite dark. So going back to your original color and then making it fairly darker and maybe even more blue a little bit and more gray. Just kind of a darker version of your main color basically. All you're going to do is you're going to focus on drawing clusters that are dark but that are kind of um, filling in the bottom parts of your clusters that you already have. So you're basically darkening um, the bottom part of the clusters that you already have and that helps with filling in the tree a little bit more so it's even less sad than it was but it also helps with just giving it more body and more shape so that it doesn't feel quite as flat anymore. So take your time at this step because this is really the last chance we have at filling in the tree and um, once you're done kind of coloring the bottom parts of the cluster that are already there you're gonna see what you have um, to work with and you totally can add even more little clusters at this point um, you know you can also play with the size of your brush so far we've been using pretty much the same size but you can make the brush size even smaller and add in smaller clusters and even more details without getting into like too many details sometimes it's nice to add just a few more pointy bits and, and stuff like that so really take your time at this at this step because this is the, the last step we have in drawing the body of the tree then we're just going to make it look better so if your base is not where you want to be just take the time to get it where you want to be at this stage so once you have a base that you like go ahead and zoom in and either with the smudge tool or the water blender Staying on your front branches layer, you're just going to blend in only the top edges of your clusters. So you want to keep the hard edge on the bottom, but you do want to blend in the top one so it, you don't get as many like of the digital overlaps because they make the piece look less fluid. But be really careful that you don't blend in the bottom edges, otherwise your tree is going to look like this like big mushy blob. And we don't want that, we want a tree that can, you know, stand up for itself. <laughs> you can also go back to your back branches and smudge in kind of the center part. So making sure the outside of the clusters remain sharp. But you can, you can definitely blend in the center just to make it feel a bit more full. Um, yeah. Okay, so at this point we're going to need to flatten the layers so we have just one main layer. But before doing that, I like to group group them all and then rename this group to layers so that I can just duplicate it. So I have just kind of a safety net if I mess up in the future. So yeah, duplicate that group, hide the bottom one and then flatten the top one. And this one you can rename to tree or, or whatever. I always struggle renaming my layers with this new like writing function that is uh, with iOS 14 but um, thanks for bearing with me and once you do manage to rename your layer go ahead and select your eraser and just go over some of the tips of the clusters so that they are a bit more like pointy because right now we use brush that were like a fairly round shape but we do want to have some more uh, well pointy <laughs> branches as well not all of them we do want to have some that are kind of softer but it's nice to have some contrast basically so you know I i'm from canada so we're used to having a lot of snow and uh, my christmas trees usually are always like covered in snow so I, I quite like erasing some clusters that kind of mimic like snow piling up on the tree as well uh if you want you'll have like an inside christmas tree that's totally fine don't erase snow clusters but otherwise yeah just just go ahead and you can add a little bit more details by erasing some extra clusters that are going to it's just going to look like there's a little bit of snow in there so yeah we're now going to add a little bit more color variation to our tree so use the selection tool set to freehand you're going to draw some sort of like fat crescent moon shape towards the bottom and you're going to feather your selection somewhere between 20 and 30 percent 
And in the hue saturation and brightness panel, go ahead and shift the hue a little bit towards the right. So it's going to make your tree a bit more blue in the bottom and lower the brightness as well. And you can play with the saturation, uh, maybe lowering it a little bit. We're then going to repeat the same technique, but with the top of the tree. So go ahead and select just like a funky shape at the, at the top and then feather it somewhere between 20 and 30%. Opening up hue saturation brightness. This time we're going to lift up the brightness and shift the hue towards the left. So it's going to make the tree a little bit more yellow. And I don't know about you, but when I was a kid, I was always so excited to decorate a Christmas tree. And we had this rule in my family, which was we only decorate the tree on December 1st, not before that. And I'm releasing this video on December 1st because that's kind of my way of decorating a tree this year. Um, you know, with everything that's going on in the world, it's, it's a bit harder to get and um, have the same family traditions that we usually have. So basically all I'm trying to say is that this step we're going to decorate the tree. And I'm going to keep it very simple, but you can go crazy and add a bunch of like Christmas ornaments and stuff like that. I'm just going to stay with very thin lines or uh, small lights, I mean. And I'm going to draw them on a separate layer that I'm going to set to add just to get this light effect. And I'm going with a really pale yellow, but you can use any, any color that you want. You can even go with like alternating colors um, to have a very bright and colorful Christmas tree, but I like to keep it very simple and kind of elegant. And yeah, all, all you have to do if you want to draw lights like this is set a layer to add and then just draw little circles all around your tree and it's going to brighten it up. And one final little step that we can do is creating a new layer on top of everything and renaming this layer to splatters. And for this, I'm going to use the splatter brush again that comes with the watercolor brush set, which will again be linked in the description below with your promo code just for you guys. Um, so if you don't have this one, you can just skip to the end. But yeah, going with the splatter brush on a new layer set to linear burn and a green color that, that you like, just go ahead and add some splatters and it's going to tie in your piece and make it feel a bit more just fuller and more complete and also just give this cool watercolor final touches to it. So yeah, there you go. This was how to draw a watercolor Christmas tree in Procreate. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel. And I would love to see what you guys create. So make sure to share the results with me either on Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. And last but not least, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos every week.